And hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Kyle the Pug Sports Review Show, episode number 28, where we talk about all the huge sports topics in the sports world today. And I apologize, so let me uh, close this window here really quick to drown out the noise. There we go. Anyways, guys, I'm Kyle the Pug, a.k.a. Kyle Lodi, and welcome to Kyle the Pug Sports Review Show, episode number 28. So we got a doozy of a show for you guys here today. We got some three sports topics that... We are going to talk about for you guys, and of course, I'm not doing this alone. We have Cowboy Nick here with us. Hi, y'all doing? Welcome to Cowboy Nick, Cowboy Nick, and trick or treat all you people out there and have a good time. Thank you, Joel. Here's a call. We actually got Kyle Coffee already. We got it. Where he's going to be crazy. There we go. He's going to battle war for this year. He's going to battle out there. 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 Great, and you know, you know what I mean. We're gonna have, we're gonna have Matt playing. Uh, we're gonna have Matt playing Batman, and I'm gonna dress up as fucking Superman, and we're all gonna have a great time. Uh, that's not gonna happen. But I don't know where you got that information from because I whatever goes on in your head is kind of good. Kyle, you would make a great Kratos. No, I wouldn't actually. I'm not even. I'm not even in good shape enough. I would have to like work out 24/7. Okay, okay, we gotta move on here. Let's just let's just save it. Let's just save it till the end of the show. That's all I gotta say. Because right now we got some topics here to talk about, and like I said, I apologize if I'm you know sound half asleep because I like woke up you know 30 40 minutes ago. But I'm gonna try to toughen it out. So. Here we go, guys. We're going to be talking about some Major League Baseball playoffs, what happened yesterday, and also we got some Hockey Town segment. We don't normally do Hockey Town Wednesday, but we decided to bring it back for you guys anyways by my request. So, but first, but first, we're going to recap the NFL Week 5 and what happened, and we're going to give out our thoughts and uh, give out our opinions of what happened for last week's game. So, um... My first initial thoughts, okay, of course, with Tom Brady coming back, there was no question about it. And basically, Tom Brady had, you know, a career day coming back. He threw over 400 yards against the Browns. And you saw this coming, too. Yeah. As it, as it was said, too, it says, it says right here, Tom Brady looking razor sharp at the time and relatively um, rough free after um, serving his four-game suspension. And his passing wasn't just 400 yards. He pumped up. He was pumped up, and uh, Brady passed his for 406 yards. So <laughs> yeah, uh, that's um. It's safe to say that Tom Brady is officially back. So and then the Patriots beating the Browns 33 to 13, which I kind of expected it to be a little yeah. bit of a blowout. And if you didn't expect that, you better you didn't expect that to happen. You must be an idiot, and, I, and honestly, I'm gonna uh, honestly, we're gonna have you committed because <laughs> everyone. No, we're not gonna, gonna have you committed. That's not gonna happen. No, no committing. Yeah, everyone's gonna have you committed. But the other thing, I was shocked about too, and I and I honestly, I didn't even realize this until like the last couple of days. Was that Brady was actually on the team for that game? Like he actually was on the team. Okay, well, that was kind of well. I didn't. I mean, honestly, like. I think the Niners were favored in that game, and I'll talk about what the Niners' situation here is in a bit. But I knew that Arizona, if they actually played together and they played it right, I'm pretty sure that they were going to do something. And they actually did do something on the ground, too. So we got to give yeah, credit to them, and especially their defense, too, coming up big against Blaine Gabbard. And let's, oh, go, to, let's go to the Niners here really quick. They're going to start Kaepernick next week when they um, for a week six. So what do you think about you know, that? It, it, you know what everyone's saying is still about Kaepernick. It's like, come on, man. Just like, like stop trying to be a wannabe black man or a fucking petty football shit. Well, you know, everybody wanted, um, everybody hated Kaepernick. They wanted him traded out of there. Now, all of a sudden, they want Kaepernick in there. So the Niner fans need to make up their goddamn minds. You know what I mean? No shit, but like, 
But the one thing for Kaepernick, he is a good player, but the fact is, come on, man. Stop trying to be a one of these fucking Black Panther and just play ball. Shit. All right, then the other thing I was going to mention here was, of course, the uh, Minnesota Vikings are the last undefeated team left in the NFL. <laughs> yeah. Who would have thought that, right? <laughs> I can't stop laughing about that because think about the football team like, why do you stay unbeaten with an easy 31-13 win? Victory over the Texans. Adam Trent finished with a uh, carry of 100 and 27 receiving yards after Minnesota. Uh, Sam Bradford ain't joking around, I can tell you that much. Dude, Sam Bradford, I'm serious. Like, Sam Bradford, every, after every game, I've heard rumors that he doesn't do a locker room and start seeing it. We need to get him out of the champions. Fuck Philadelphia, my friend. You mean, you mean <laughs> screw Green Bay and screw Detroit? <laughs> Pretty much, but... You got, you got the wrong division there, pal. <laughs> no, I know. Man, I swear, we're going to have, they're all going to get captured if they love. They're all going to, uh, they're going to get fucking, um, uh, captured and it's going to have fucking, it's going to fucking be like Kurt Angle's team on the side because, like, and have every fucking other team in the league fucking all the time with their arms. They're just going to take these stuff. And then I mentioned, and I mentioned the, um, Undefeated teams being the last one, right? So the Eagles are no longer undefeated as they lose to the Lions on the road. We just had uh, kind of a questionable situations up there in uh, Detroit with all the bad officiating. Yeah. But I kind of knew this was going to happen because... And Minnesota fans are going to be pissed. It was a really close game, though, nevertheless. Yes, it was. Excuse me. But... The one thing... That. Oh God, damn it! Oh, you, you you having a having a stroke over there? No. It's the fact that I had a big breakfast this morning and fucking. Please, oh, please, please don't, please don't say it. <laughs> please, but, um, please stop. I'm not, but um. Anyway, um. Uh, anyway, I got. We don't we don't want that on the show, Nick. You realize that, I right? I know that. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna put it on the show. But. We, don't want, we don't want that, man. Come on, you're, yeah, you're better I, than I that. I know, I don't want to give you that, for Christ's sake. You think I want to go on there? Yeah, I just want to think of the whole idea. No, I don't want that. Yeah, so, anyways, okay, yeah. back to the Philly yeah. and Detroit game. But, anyway. But, anyway, uh. Uh, anyway, with this game, people were saying this too. They're like, the Lions need this. Why? Because when you think about this, so every all this shit that the Lions have been go, have gone through, so they fans and everyone were saying, in Detroit, we need this because we need to show people that the Lions are just as good as everyone else is, and just like the Detroit Tigers, we need this so that people get off our backs. And I was disappointed, and they did. And what I was surprised about was the fact that their offense actually did what it did. Yeah, I, I mean, I definitely agree with you. I mean, you know, despite, you know, the Eagles having the better stats in the offense, I mean, the Lions stuck it together, and they pretty much got the job done. And, well, I, people would say thanks to officiating, thanks to the help of the refs, but I wouldn't technically say that. I mean, there were there were some calls here and there that were kind of questionable and kind of pissed off Eagles of, fans, but especially what's the name of the head ref? Hell no, he means that the guy who they had it. I can't remember his name now, but the guy who they had as the head ref in that game was the same guy. Pete Morelli. Yeah, who was the Who's also guy. who's also the principal at St. Mary's? Yeah, you know, kind of. He kind of looks yeah. like a grease ball, honestly. That's what Tony Bruno yeah. said on Twitter, too. He called him a grease ball. Yeah. Because, I mean, come on. It's like, we know, the people know his call is, like, the calls that he makes. Everyone knows that he did. Everyone knows he did that. Because, for the stuff he does, not something he needs, but the stuff he does, and it's like, in that game, it's just like, oh, uh, no. It's like, because last year, what he did uh, in the playoffs, if you, if you remember last year's playoff game when it was, the Texans and the Texans and the Bears, he made three questionable calls and three people, unquote, saying 
on Twitter, and I, and I saw this on Twitter saying that they wanted to personally stone cold stunner his ass. So. All right, so what last game really quick before we move on. And we got like 30 seconds to talk about this game. But the San Diego Chargers, Oakland Raiders. So Raiders are now 4-1, and one, and they look like they might be a team to watch out for in the AFC West. Okay, okay. They're 4-1 now, but you have to play. And, I, and I'm going to say that they're 4-1, but I'm still going to say this. Okay, Oakland. There are like hell of the things you made. You need to go over your film and look at what you did and make your they get yourself better. Because yes, you won. But think about this. How many opportunities do the Chargers have, especially in the in the four in the third and fourth quarter that they have to not get off to kick your ass? Well, yeah, that's kind of saying so. Well, not, well, it was a high-scoring shootout, so both defenses played awful, but it was just the Raiders came out on the better end of the stick. So, um, yeah, moving so on here, little, moving on here to our, too. yeah, so moving on to our next topic, we have, of course, the uh, NLDS division recap of what happened last night. So, um, Let's talk a little bit about that, shall we? And we're going to talk about a little bit of the previews. So we're going to talk about the uh, two games here in five minutes. So, first one being, of course, the um, the Nats and the Dodgers, which I, of course, was a very interesting game for, to say the least. And I was, of course, very emotional as a fan. I will talk about that here in a bit. But the Dodgers stay alive. They win you know, to stay alive, and now they got to go to Washington to decide a game five, and that's going to be interesting because the Dodgers have already used up Clayton Kershaw, and now they got Rich Hill on the mound against Max Scherzer in game five against Washington. So, what do you think about this situation? Well, now they're going back into the, they're going into Washington, and they're going to play at one of the toughest, toughest field in the game and all that stuff. But the fact is. The Dodgers do have some great pitchers. They have they have some great. Sam, sometimes they can be inconsistent at times. Uh, Barring at Kershaw. Times, yes. But the thing is, the thing is too, and I'm going to say this about the Dodgers. You guys also have three hitters who are known for really, who are known for getting the ball where it needs to go. But the one thing that the Nationals have on you is a certain heavy-duty pitcher who has, in the past, who has not the ball. Well, it's not it's not just the heavy-duty pitching, but you got to look at what the Nationals have done, and, you know, offensively, too. Of course, we have especially the uh, top five guys in the, uh, the uh, batting lineup, of course, with Trey Turner and, of course, uh, Bryce Harper. Jason Ward's yeah. doing some work, too. And then you got a bunch of other guys that are stepping up also. Like Anthony Rendon as well. Yeah, and that was too that they just picked up as well. So. All right. So uh, that being said, I kind of want to talk about how last night's game kind of affected me as well, especially with the Dodgers, you know, winning the with the game against the Nationals. Yeah, and the game there was, was there was okay. So we had Chase Utley being the hero and whatnot. There were some yeah. questionable calls. I'm not, I'm not talking about just for like Game 5. Game 4 had, those, of course, some questionable calls as well. But Game yeah. 5, there was a moment in that game where Puig, Yasiel Puig, I'm pretty sure everybody knows who that is, didn't even yeah. check it. I mean, well, he checked his swing, didn't even go around. And then the umpire, instead of just looking at, for first base to see if he went around or not, he calls him out. And then Puig gets so livid, and so does Dave Roberts, so they have like a minute, two minute, you know, conversation, you know, saying that, of course, that he didn't swing around. And then, <coughs> excuse me, when they uh, showed the replay, when they showed the replay for that, he didn't even swing. Did you actually see the whole thing, Cowboy? Yeah, I saw that, and even I was saying to myself, what the fuck are you doing this, man? I mean that was just stupid. That was just a stupid call by the ump, though, because you gotta at least. Yeah. I mean, if you were if you're gonna call him out, at least look towards first base to actually get a sign of approval. Then that'd be one yeah. thing. But if you actually do that yourself, and then of course he didn't swing around. Of course, according to the replay, then then we kind of have a bit of a problem here. You know what I mean? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so when you think of the umpires, yes, there's always something bad that's gonna happen with umpires. Believe me, I know this. 
Let me, let me give you, you guys two stories, okay? All right, real, real quick. Well, real quick though, we gotta move on here in like the next fifteen yeah, seconds. So save it, save it, time. save it for the next, uh, save it for the next time. All right, folks. Here, Kyle. We're gonna talk about this next time, but there's always trouble with umpires. Believe me, I know this because they, they, they're just looking for some action. They're not really opening their eyes, and you know, a lot of, a lot of times you just think when you think of when you look at blue and you think about it, you're like thinking to yourself. No, they had a chant going at Dodger Stadium saying "Blue, you suck." They had, they actually had the whole chant. Did you actually hear that chant or no? Yeah, I, I, I heard that. I was, and I was thinking of it. You know what? It's true because he didn't hang around. His foot placement and everything. He didn't swing around. Open your eyes. Take your glasses off and open your damn eyes. <laughs> Honest to God, but. Anyway, speaking of, you know, blowing uh, five to two leads, even though the Dodgers successfully um, got their win and forced a game five, I can't really say the same for the Giants, though. And we're going to talk about uh, what happened in the ninth inning. So the Cubs scored four runs in the ninth inning, being down, you know, five to two, and the Giants' bullpen has been just absolutely awful as of lately. And the even the even year, the whole even year thing pretty much died in the ninth inning. I mean, first eight innings, you know, great. The Giants have a chance to force a game five. But then but then the ninth inning came along, and then uh, everything just started going to hell for them in that hand basket. Pretty much, yeah. So, and then Ardolis Chapman gets the job done, strikes out the sides, Cubs move on the NLCS. What are your thoughts on that? Even though you're not the hugest Cubs fan in the world, I just want to get your thoughts on that. The Giants growing. I, I, I hope that the Cubs, I hope that they become Cubs players, get to a massive car accident, and No, don't, no, 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 no. Don't be... I can't. You know they're going to be favored to win, the, you know, the NLCS and the World Series, no matter who they face, right? I can't stand it. I can't stand it. These guys, they're not meant to win. It's, it's, oh, it's been over 100 years since they've won the World Series. At least give them some credit. They got the offense. They had the pitching. No, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I'm going to take, I want to. Pull my pants down and take a shit on their bullpen. I can't stand <laughs> this team. I don't care if they. I don't care how good they are. They are shit. Their field is shit. Their field is shit. Why? Why are you so? Oh, now, now I made you angry all of a sudden. Why are you so angry at this team? At least give them credit for their comeback. This team is this team lost in last night. They're meant for last night. They're, they have the best record. They have the best record in baseball. They're the number one seed in the playoffs, and they they have like one of the best rookies in baseball. With, you know, Chris Bryant, and they got so much talent on that team. They have shit on their team. They are shit. They are meant to be shit, and they belong in shit. you are you are so upset. Yes, I am. Because they don't belong. They don't belong. They are meant for last night. They belong in last night. And any in any world series that they won in history, they all deserve it. They belong last night. Well, they are fucking assholes, and they deserve. They don't deserve what they get. And I hope that the Indians or the Cardinals or the Cardinals which is funny, though, because, you know, the, uh, the the Blue Jays and the Indians, you never expected them to be in the NLCS or playing each other, for that matter. So that's going to be kind of an interesting little you know, tactic there. But I know that, I know, but I do know that the Indians have George Trubal and they're using they're well. Okay, so going back to the National League uh, Division Series really quick, we're going to get our your, uh, picks for um, Thursday's game. Who wins and why between the Dodgers and the Nationals? Well, in this one, I'm going to go, and this one, it is hard for me to do this, but I am going to go with the Dodgers in this one, but I think that the Dodgers are going to do this. Over time. Scherzer. Well, I, the re, I, I just think that the Dodgers, I, I just look at the Dodgers and I think it's their time. 
to go to go and to get that ring and to go back to LA and just bring just bring the joy back to California. All right. Well, that's that's going to be really difficult. But I mean, well, for the offense wise and the starting pitching has to outsmart Max Scherzer, especially you know the uh, the crowd in Washington as well. But I feel like the final. I'm not going to give a pick though, but a key to the game, and I can give you just like one small key of what's going to happen here. And I will tell you that the final will be like two to one, three to two. Four to two, somewhere around that ballpark. I mean, it's going to be like low to mid kind of a scoring affair, and I'm not going to tell you who wins though, but it's going to be some something, some final score like that. I can tell you that much for sure. But like I said, no pick, but those are kind of like keys to the game. And my, my other key, in fact, is that of course the Dodgers' offense has to you know energize themselves, wake up, hit their pitches against Scherzer. And of course, for the national side, they got to jump on Rich Hill early, and, and I mean really, oh, really early no. to get the advantage going as well. Not getting back. You have to, and a lot of people are laughing me for saying that when it comes to the national, they basically have bought out fielding. They're out fielding to a science. It's basically they know how to place their fielders, and they know where to put the, where to put players to get that ball. And you can you have seen a plenty of national of the national baseball game, they know where to put players to get that ball where they want it. Alright, so that being said, let's move on here to our final topic, which is, of course, Hockey Town. So, Cowboy Nick, I'll leave it to you. Hey, hey folks, welcome to Hockey Town, brought to you by Cubs.com. That's right, Cubs.com. If you think that you're not as you know, 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 you're and that's you right. are and such that's a hater. Line, the Cowboys said so. But anyway, we're going to get into sort of our line of the season. Here we go. The film is great. As the season is getting ready to start, and it's going to be coming out on the uh, well, October 15th, which is kind of a couple of days. But some of these games, we're not going to talk about a lot of them because you have to get off with a lot of other stuff. But starting off uh, on, the, on October 14th, we're going to have at 7 p.m. Eastern time. We'll have the very team coming into Cleveland to face off against their face. We'll have Rockford, the Nighthawks, coming into Cleveland to face off in a good game. We're also are going to have another good game coming up as well, coming into Stockton on the 19th, as, uh, as Texas will come into Stockton to face off against each other, and that's the Texas Stars. We're also going to have another good game coming up, as we'll have, as we'll have St. Jude's Ice Caps coming into Springfield to face off each other. We'll also have Hershey, Pennsylvania, uh, at home to fill the face off one of the toughest teams in the AHL. Brooks Ferry, uh, Brooks Ferry, Smack Penguins, and if you folks don't know who that, uh, who that team is, take a look on, uh, take a look online. Look them up. They are one of the toughest AHL teams in the league. They have, they have, they have basically won the AHL title over 17 times, uh, yeah, since they first came out in 1990, uh, Hey, and they are the affiliate for the uh, the Penguins, as everyone knows, one of the top of teams in the NHL, and they are one of the top of teams in the AHL. And basically, when you win, if you play the World Series uh, Spanish Penguins, you know that your team is going to have a one to one to basically two chance of actually being the team. And people in Scotland even know. Who have, seen, who have come in and watched this team play, you know you're like, oh shit, we have to play, we have to play World Series Frank Penguins because when this team comes in, when this team comes in, you don't necessarily get the win. Now, as we come into, as we come into the ECHL, which I haven't talked about in a while, coming up on October 6th, and it has Better get up already. to date with that. <clears throat> well, they, they are one of the other teams that people have I mean, to see the, uh, the top of the U.S. team play, and they have walked out pissed off because they have beaten us. They have beaten us ever since we have had the, uh, the East Coast of Stockton and have this team come in. They have beaten Stockton a total of 15 times since they, um, since Stockton, since the, um, the Heat have moved here from New York and the Thunder have moved to where the Heat was. So, when you, uh, coming up pretty soon, uh, uh, recently coming up, we have, uh, this is coming up from 
in East Asia. We have no book uh, beating out Atlanta. Cincinnati uh, beat now we are uh, really nailers. So of course we are losing to Greenville, Pennsylvania. So Myra winning over Redding, Calvadu winning uh losing to Toledo, we're in Nailers, we now uh, losing to Cincinnati, Indiana losing to uh beating Fort Wayne, uh, Colorado beating Rapid City, Fort Wayne losing to Indiana, Greenville losing to uh beating out Atlanta, Toledo beating out Calvadu, Orlando beating uh out Florida, Redding losing to Elmira, Elling uh beating out Wichita. Rapid City being Colorado, Brampton uh, uh, being at Kalamazoo, Brampton being out for Wayne, Idaho losing to Utah, uh, South Carolina uh, winning over last, uh, last year by one point, Utah winning against Idaho by one point, South Carolina uh, being out of last year by uh, beating the last year 3 2, and coming up on the 13th of uh, this month here in October. South Carolina will face off against um, and face off against the last show once again. And now coming into the uh, <coughs> coming into tonight for the NHL, we have four games coming out. The people are the people are just going nuts for these four games because these are the same four teams who played each other last year for the to go to the uh, to go to the Stanley Cup to go to the Stanley Cup. To face off against each other. Just preseason, and, though. Almost time for regular season. Yeah, these four teams that will be playing, these teams that will be playing each other, we're going to have, uh, for coming out from, uh, from Canada, we're going to have, we're coming, coming out, of, uh, out of Canada, which will, the BCA games will be on TSN, uh, Toronto Sports Network. The Maple Leafs and Senators facing off against each other at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the Flames will face off against Edmonton Oilers on NBC, SN, uh, basically NBC Sportsnet. We are at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which everyone knows what time that will be here. You'll have the Blues facing off against the Blackhawks. And at 10.30 p.m. on Eastern Standard Time on NBC Sportsnet, you have the LA Kings taking on everyone's favorite team, the San Jose Sharks. Maybe if you're in the Bay Area, that's probably one of the favorite teams if you're up there, but... Oh, Pittsburgh yeah. Penguins is where it's at right now. Oh, yeah, especially Wilkes-Barre Strand, the minor league team. That team actually recruits not just from, like, people say, oh, you have to, you have to play in, you have to play in juniors, you have to play in all this. No, it, uh, it has been proven, it has been announced that Wilkes-Barre Strand will go and get kids from freshman year in high school. Well, there you go. They recruit everybody of all ages, so. Oh, yeah. They, they, they even had one guy from one year, I heard. He wasn't even in high school. He was in middle school. Oh, good for him. Yeah, so he got to play in minor league hockey, and he went on to, uh, they say he went on to play in, uh, in Pittsburgh, but no one, no one has uh, come forward. They say that he actually has played, uh, has played at that level yet, but. There are rumors stating that he that he is playing for Pittsburgh right now. So. All right. Well, there you go. Uh, I want to ask you something here, really quick. Go ahead. Remember when you used to hate the Penguins and Chris Sidney Crosby at one time, and you finally yeah. came to your senses. Pretty much. <laughs> I remember those days. He was like. Well, I remember, especially with the uh, Winter Olympics team for Canada too, and you were just, uh, oh my God, you were so mad at that. Or with the whole yeah. situation with Sidney Crosby. They're like, oh, he should go through like tests and not be automatically on the team, blah, 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 blah. And, oh, my God. I just couldn't stop laughing for days. <laughs> yeah. It was just honest to God. I mean, that was probably one of the best moments I've ever seen you get angry. And not just, of course, getting angry with that, but we got the Cubs also, which I want the Cubs to win the World Series so badly. So that way it just gets you all pissed off. I just want to well, see you just reason, rage. People ask me, people ask me, what is the main reason why I hate the Cubs so much? The fact that what they did to my team, and it's like, it's like, God damn it, you know what I mean? It's like, and here, and here's the, and here's the most insulting. That's not even the worst part about this year's playoffs. You got the Cardinals didn't even make it there either. That's that's the worst part out of all this. So the Giants yeah. knocked you guys out, and so did the Mets as well. So what do you got to say about that? Your season's another failure. 
They have their right, though, to think that. Everybody has Not the that right to think that. They all have to do. When you think you're, when your team, you think you're the best team in the world, okay, look. That's you being competitive. Know. That's being really competitive. And I, sometimes I like to be competitive also as a part of state of my nature, too. Yes, 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 yes. But when you think about this, when you think about, oh, yeah, we're like, we're like, <coughs> okay, you may be the old, one of the oldest teams in, in baseball, but, okay. If you're gonna have, if you're gonna sh show off your peaches and, uh, <laughs> and try to be, and try to be what? like another team, okay, I want you, I want them to, do, I want, to, I want to hear some Cubs fans to go out and try to say that they're better than the Yankees and see how many people shoot them in the head. Okay, well, that's that's enough of that because we're out of time here for today's show. And I want to thank you guys so much for enjoying this episode of the Kyle Pug Sports Review Show. And if you guys did enjoy the show, please drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new to my channel. Definitely helps my channel grow. And once you hit that subscription button, be sure to hit the bell notification as well. So that way you can stay up to date on everything, on everything I do on that channel. And don't forget my main channel as well. So I'm Kyle the Pug, and for Cowboy Nick... Okay. Okay, that's 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 a little too much there, cowboy. So I'm Kyle the Pug, and I will see you guys on Friday for the next episode. So have a good day, and as always, stay safe. Peace. You've been out all night. I don't know where you've been. You're slurring all your words, not making any sense. But I don't fucking care at all. Cause I have hella feelings for you.